Hello again, Year 7. It's Ms Redmond here with your second lesson, uh, summary lesson from the forces topic. This one is called What is Hooke's Law? And it's all about squashing and stretching things. You've got your learning journey down here, so feel free to pause the video and write that down. That reminds me, if you haven't got a pen already, please stop the video and go and get one because you'll need it to take notes and do the little tasks as we go along. So last lesson, I mentioned a scientist called Robert Hooke. He is the person who came up with Hooke's Law. And that's what we're going to be talking about today. So your DNA is what jobs might use knowledge of forces and do you know anyone with one of these jobs? Please pause the video and write down your ideas. Okay, here's a little vocabulary recap. Uh, please pause the video and define each of these terms. The next slide is going to be the answers. Okay, here are the answers to those terms. So friction is the force between two surfaces and it acts in the opposite direction to the direction of movement. Gravity is a force which pulls matter towards each other. It's very weak, so it's only felt when the object is very large, like the Earth. Magnetism is a force of attraction or repulsion between two magnetic materials. Upthrust is the force which pushes an object up in water or a liquid. Please don't use the answer upthrust unless the object is in a liquid. Reaction force is the force which opposes any other force. Contact force is uh, a force where two objects have to be touching and with a non-contact non force, the objects don't have to be touching. Okay, forces can deform, compress or stretch objects. So deform just means to change shape. Your D is taking away and form means shape, so you're taking away the shape. Compress means to squash, so the object takes up less space. And stretch means get longer. So these people are making some bread, so they're probably doing all three of these things, I think, because they're changing the shape of the dough, they're compressing it because they're squashing it down, and they're stretching it out as well. Okay, so a reaction force, a bit more detail on this one. Um, have a look at this diagram up at the top. So this is showing you a solid material. Now, normally, when we've seen particle diagrams of solids, the uh, particles are very, very close together. So this is a slightly different representation because it's showing you the bonds between all of the particles. That's how, that's why solids actually stay together in that fixed arrangement and they just vibrate in the place because they've got all these bonds holding them together. Now, if you push down on a solid object, what you're doing is compressing these bonds. You're squashing them. You're making them smaller. So a reaction force um, is when these bonds are compressed and squashed and they're trying to stretch out again to their normal shape and that causes a reaction force. So you've got an example of that here. So this person is pushing on the brick wall, they're squashing some of the bonds in the solid of the brick and those bonds are trying to spring back again and they're causing a reaction force. Okay, Hooke's Law. Hooke's Law states that the extension of an elastic object, for example a spring, is directly proportional to the force added up to the elastic limit. So we've got a diagram here to explain it, we'll explain it a bit more on the next slide. So here is a spring, which is an elastic object because it stretches and it goes back to its original shape. And this one has no masses on it. It's got no force added onto it. This one, we've added one weight and we're calling that X and it's stretched by a certain amount. On the next picture, we've added two weights, hence where we've got two times X and it's stretched by double the amount compared to just adding one weight, okay? 
So if you double the weight, you also double the extension. So this extension with two weights is double the extension with one weight. Okay, let's decode this sentence then. So Hooke's law again, the extension of an elastic object like a spring is directly proportional to the force added up to the elastic limit. Extension means how much the object is stretched, not how long it is. So it's how much longer it's got. So for example, if you've got a spring that's five centimeters long and you put a weight on it and it becomes eight centimeters long, the extension is three centimetres, not eight. Directly proportional means that when you double the force, the extension doubles. So in the example I've just used, you've got a three centimetre stretch when you add one weight. If you add two weights, you're going to get a six centimetre stretch. And the elastic limit is when you use too much force and the object breaks or won't go back to its original shape. So a spring might stretch dramatically and then uh, not stretch anymore, or an elastic band or a hair tie might break completely. So Hooke's law, if you double the force, the extension also doubles until the object breaks or stretches lots and won't go back. Um, so here's a person bungee jumping, so she's going to cause a certain amount of stretch on that bungee rope, a certain amount of extension. If you put somebody who's half her weight on the same bungee rope, they're going to cause half the extension. Tension is the force created when the bungee cord has stretched as far as it's going to go and, the, and pulls the bungee jumper back up again. So when she gets to the bottom of her bungee jump, the cord is going to stretch as much as it's going to go with her weight on it and tension is going to pull her back up again. You also get tension from a string. Okay, so if you've been in school, we will have done this practical, hopefully. Um, it's a really common one. You might get asked about it in exam. So we've got a clamp stand holding up, in this case, an elastic loop. And we've got a hanger with masses on here and the masses cause a force on that elastic loop and then you can measure the elastic loop with this ruler and here is a results table so down the left hand side you've got your independent variable which is the force and you're changing that by changing the number of masses on that hanger zero to six and on the right hand side right hand column you've got your dependent variable which is the thing which you measure or you could think of it depending on the independent variable which is the extension uh, so if you don't put any force on the elastic loop the extension is zero that doesn't mean the length of the loop is zero it means it hasn't stretched at all obviously because you haven't applied any force if you put one mass, it stretches, the extension is two centimetres, then four, six, eight, ten, twelve. So you should be able to notice a pattern there. The extension is increasing by two centimetres every time. Or well, the other way to think of it is, if you double the force, you double the extension. So from one to two, you're doubling the force, right? and the extension goes from 2 to 4. 4 is 2 times bigger than 2. Or if you do 3 times the amount of force, then you get 3 times the amount of extension, yes? 6 is 3 times bigger than 2, etc. Uh, you can pause this slide and write down those results if you would like to. OK, here's a graph showing the same results. So you've got force along the bottom. Your independent variable always goes along the bottom of your graph. And you've got extension in centimetres up the side. Uh, the dependent variable always goes up the side of your graph. And you can see this lovely straight line. And that is because these two things, the force and the extension, are directly proportional. So when the force increases, 
the extension also increases. So we've got this line going upwards. Here's an exam style question about this investigation. So uh, you've got Leonie wanted to investigate what happened when you stretched a spring. She hung a spring on a retort stand and added masses to it. This is a diagram for her equipment. Suggest a scientific question that she could answer using this equipment and write a plan for an investigation to collect data to answer that question. Please pause the video now and write down your answers. So here's a possible answer to that question. Your scientific question could be, how does force affect the extension of a spring? Um, lots of people would write something like, how much force does it take to break the spring? That's an okay question, but you're only going to collect one result for each spring. So you're not comparing two things, whereas here, you're comparing the force and the extension of the spring. So you're comparing those two things. You're seeing how the force affects the extension. So this is a much better question. And then your method would be to set up the equipment as shown in the diagram. Add a weight to the weight holder and measure the extension and record your results. You could go into more detail on this one and say that you need to measure the length of the spring every time and then afterwards calculate the extension by taking the initial length away from the length of each stage. It's up to you. I think this way is quicker and easier. Uh, then repeat step two until you've added 10 weights and draw a graph of your results. Here's your summary. Forces can deform, compress or stretch objects. A reaction force happens when you try to compress a solid object. Hooke's law is the extension of an elastic object like a spring is directly proportional to the force added up to the elastic limit. And tension is the force of a spring, elastic band or string pulling an object upwards. Thank you very much and I will speak to you next time.